जनरल मनोज पांडे चीफ ऑफ आर्मी स्टाफ आर्मी चीफ फ्रॉम अफ्रीकन कंट्रीज सीनियर ऑफिसर्स ऑफ इंडियन एंड अफ्रीकन कंट्रीज आर्मी इस टीम द वेटरन्स रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ डिफेंस इंडस्ट्री फ्रेंड फ्रॉम मीडिया जेंटलमैन माय वार्म ग्रीटिंग्स टू अवर वैल्यूड गेस्ट फ्रॉम अफ्रीका आई हैड द अपॉर्चुनिटी टू वेटनेस द प्रजेंटेशन बाई जाम्बियन एंड युगेंडन आर्मी चीफ्स द प्रजेंटेशन वेर वेरी इन्फॉर्मेटिव एंड रेलिवेंट आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट चीफ ऑफ आर्मी स्टाफ जनरल मनोज पांडे टू टेक अप द पॉइंट्स मेड बाई अवर अफ्रीकन फ्रेंड्स लेट मी अश्योर यू ऑल दैट वी डीपली वैल्यू अवर इनपुट्स फॉर कैरिंग इंडिया अफ्रीका डिफेंस पार्टनरशिप टू ग्रेटर हाइट्स friends it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to the first edition of the india africa army chiefs conclave your presence here reflects the strong ties between india and africa woven over shared historical experiences and nurtured by common goals and vision having diverse cultures languages and religions we are united by the common goals of eradicating poverty achieving sustainable development promoting peace and harmony and improving the quality of life of our peoples our partnership drives the south south cooperation to build a truly multipolar polar world order which is more responsive to the aspirations of developing countries friends india and africa share a rich history across millennia even from the perspective of the entire humanity out of africa theory postulates that africa is the cradle of the humanity irrespective of the continents races and ethnicities india is one of the most ancient civilizations of the world with a youthful population and a fast growing economy the civilizational ties including people to people contacts have laid the foundation for free flow of ideas and practices since time immemorial it gained significant momentum during our common struggle against imperialism friends the solidarity mutual trust and confidence forged in the days of struggle against colonialism continue to drive india africa cooperation to this day India has been one of the strongest advocates of the decolonization of Africa and has worked for the end of imperialist racist and uh, apartheid regimes in Africa as a nation we have great respect and affection for our african brothers and sisters there is a natural feeling of partnership between india and africa in our common quest for achieving prosperity and a dignified life of our peoples friends the people of india and africa together represent a third of humanity a demographic dividend which has to be used wisely we have the seized the opportunity to turn this huge human resource into an engine of growth and development many african nations have the fastest rate of growth of population in the world as per some projections by 2050 there would be an there would be one african out of every four persons in the world therefore if humanity has to develop africa has to develop today africa is home to more than a billion vibrant people with more than two thirds of them under the age of 35 if this human capital is supported with the right opportunities it will become the growth engine for not just of africa but also for the entire world friends apart from the capital scarcity issues confronting us to the relative technological backwardness vis-a-vis the developed world is one of the most important causes holding the developing world to the negative equilibrium of low economic growth rates however new and emerging technologies 
give us an opportunity to leapfrog this technological gap. I would like to pointedly mention two such emerging technologies, digital technology and clean and green technology. We would like to share our growth experiences in these two domains so that our African partners can benefit from our expertise. One particular example is the financial inclusion of the entire citizenry through digital technology, through India's innovation of Unified Payment Interface, or UPI, in SART. UPI has occasioned a financial revolution from a street vendor to a high-end showroom with an expensive product range UPI caters to one and all. Moreover, UPI is steadily becoming globally attractive, aimed measures to enable seamless cross-border transactions. Singapore has recently come on board. Friends, our exchanges of ideas and practices are not going to be one-way affairs. We would also like to learn from the experiences of our African friends. I remember distinctly the good work done in Kenya towards financial inclusion through mobile banking. Friends, I am told that the Kenya has been leading the way with a mobile phone-based financial services platform set in motion by Yum Pesa, a money transfer system that gradually advanced into real-time retail payments and further into a virtual savings and credit supply platform. I am sure there would be many more such initiatives in India and Africa where we can learn from each other. Friends, when we talk about a country's development and growth, the importance of security is often not given in importance it deserves and is sometimes even considered antithetical to the pursuit of development. It is logical, incoherent, and historically inaccurate to consider security and development as antithesis of one another. I believe that the full potential of society's development can be realized only when its security is ensured. Friends, once we accept the status of security as the bedrock of development, the role of a strong and effective state system becomes crystal clear. The modern state system in India and African countries came into being only after they achieved independence. Though many of us have come a long way since our independence, there are many African countries where the consolidation and capacity building of their state system is still a work in progress. Friends, there is no significant example in human history where a weak state system has preserved or fostered individual and collective rights. If we observe the trajectory of progress of the decolonized states in the world, only the strong, secure, and capable states have been effective in protecting the human rights and imp improving the quality of life of their citizens. Friends, against all historical experience, there is still a prevalent line of thinking which sees an inevitable dichotomy between a strong state system and individual human rights. We do not believe in such a false dichotomy. We believe that the preservation of individual human rights, such as the right to life and the personal liberty, right to employment, right to livelihood, etc., are very much dependent on a strong and effective state apparatus which can ensure the rule of law as well as promote the economic growth and the social development. In particular, economic growth and development can only happen in a safe and secure environment. Hence, we need to build robust state structures which are able to comprehend and cater to the needs and aspirations of their peoples. One of the most important pillars of a strong and secure state system is a competent and responsible defense mechanisms. Friends, Needless to say that in this defense mechanism, the armed forces and especially the army plays a key role. So 
In order to proceed on the path of development, African states have to become stronger and more capable in general, and particularly so in the defense domain. That is, the African states need capable and responsible armed forces. Friends, in pursuance of this objective, India is steadfast in its commitment to provide support in all defense-related matters to our African partner countries, including the capability enhancement of their armed forces. India has been at the forefront of providing training to the armed forces of the African nations and equipping their military personnel with the necessary skills and the competencies to face the security challenges of the 21st century. Our training programs cover a wide range of areas, including counterinsurgency, maritime security, and a specialized training in new domains such as cyber warfare and drone operations. Friends, the training goes beyond conventional subjects and also encompasses training civilians in areas such as disaster management, humanitarian aid, and medical assistance. A large number of African countries, armed forces, personnel, continue to visit India for training in different areas. Moving beyond training programs and support, joint exercise between India and African nations provide an excellent opportunity for our armed forces to learn from each other and promote interoperability. Friends, the second edition of FNDX is reflective of our continued focus on African nations to develop capacities in line with the third vision and enhance mutual capabilities. I firmly believe that the maritime neighbors linked by the mighty Indian Ocean, our cooperation in maritime security and hydrography and countering terrorism and extremism will be essential for the regional peace and prosperity. Friends, capacity building in terms of defense equipment and platforms is another critical as aspect of our defense cooperation with our African partners. Friends, as India continues to enhance its defense manufacturing capabilities, I invite African countries to explore Indian defense equipment and technologies. I would like to bring to your notice that India has emerged as a leading defense exporter in recent years. A defense manufacturing ecosystem has been created in India, which has the advantage of abundant technical manpower. Our Indian defense industry can work with you to fulfill your defense requirements. Friends, with the aim to empower our African friends to indigenously meet their defense requirements, we are also committed to sharing our expertise and knowledge in defense manufacturing, research, and development also. Friends, our partnership is based on principles of friendship, respect, and mutual benefit. Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi, during his address to the Ugandan Parliament in July 2018, stated that Africa is a top priority for India. As highlighted by Prime Minister Modi, our defense cooperation will also be guided by African priorities. Friends, let me conclude by assuring you all that we will continue to work with African nations to promote regional security, foster stability, and enhance the defense capabilities together. I hope that this conclave today and FNDX exercise pave way for a renewed effort towards a glorious future and a secure, just, and a prosperous world for the generations to come. With these few words, thank you very much.